it was July 2nd, 2022, and really a nice morning shaped up here. Wind is down for sure, humidity's up a little bit, temperatures in the 70s, but basically it's a nice morning to do some shooting. I probably should say also some testing because I'm going to continue testing my do-it-yourself willow powder and I think I'll go into the shed here and just give a quick rundown on how I've been making this stuff. And I'm certainly not an expert on this, I just got started in it. There are folks on YouTube, my uh, Everything Black Powder one and uh, Lame Beaver and other and there's others out there that have been doing this for you know quite some time. I'm just new into it but I'll just kind of quickly kind of run through the way I've been making the stuff and again I've a lot of information from those YouTube videos. So I start out by making some charcoal. Um, this is out of willow. What I'll do then is I put it in my blender here and kind of get it uh, broke down and I'll run it through a screen and I end up then with, uh, with the actual charcoal here. The reason I run it through a screen is to get a lot of the basic chunks out of it. So a screen like this and these things I kind of reject these. I'm not sure if they're uh, pure carbon or, or what's up with them, so I don't use those. Just use the powder that comes through the screen then. Using a triple beam balance here, I'm weighing up 15, 15 grams of that uh, charcoal. I'm using 10 grams of the sulfur here, and I'll run 75 grams of the potassium nitrate. That gives me my 100, 100 gram uh, mixture in the, in the right percentages. I also have a coffee grinder here that I use to um, kind of further powder that KNO3 so that it doesn't maybe take so long up here in our mill. And I just basically pour those three ingredients into, into let's say this one and then in this one here I've got 15 or 20 I think 54 or 58 caliber uh, lead balls in there that are, are doing the milling for us. I, I'll mix this for probably 12 to, to 20 hours depending on, on how it's working out. I kind of keep an eye on it to make sure that it's getting ground to the, to the fine level that they're recommending that it, it's done to. When that powder and the lead balls comes out of the tumbler then I'll put it through the screen and screen my black powder into this um, container here. What I'm doing next is I'm adding some uh, water to that. can't show it right here. I'm um, going to add some water to it. Kind of make it into what I'll call a snowball. Something that I can actually crush in my hands. Then I'll bring it over here to the, to the screen. Run through the screen and what I get ends up to be something um, that I can dry out and basically that's what I've been shooting. I did make a little modification here recently instead of running it uh, just making like a snowball out of the thing I've actually run it over here into the I've actually run it over here into the I'll call it the puck maker and I'll make a puck with that and I'll just use a hammer to, to palm that down in there to get some pressure on it. If you have too much pressure then you can't run it through your through your window screen. So done that the last couple times and I think it does it makes a little little more granulated stuff there, a little little harder and maybe not quite much powder in it then. So I'll screen it right into the to a tin like this and then I'll put it in when I've got kind of an oven rigged up about 120 degrees for a day and that seems to dry it out enough so it uh, seems to shoot just fine. But here's our gun that we shot yesterday. This is a replica, of course, of a 1858 uh, Remington. This one's done by Pieta. We fired about four targets, about 24 shots of Pyrodex P yesterday, and and we're testing that out. And then we fired, I think it was, three more targets, another 18 shots with uh, homemade black powder. So today we're going to continue continue that. And my chambers here should be pretty followed up from from yesterday and I'm not sure you know what they're going to do we'll do is we'll weigh up our charges and uh, get within a couple tenths of a of a grain on the 18 18 grain loads and a 2.2 cc lead dipper seems to give me about about 18 grains sometimes it'll run a little high when i dip some back out i want to get that down to Get that down to about 18. Like I said, I can be within a couple of a couple of tenths, not a problem. So there's there's 18.1, and I call that good enough. Now I'll actually get some dust. I'm not sure the camera will pick that up when I dump this in here. So I'm not 
too sure how this kind of powder would work out if you were dropping down a 42 inch barrel on a flintlock or something else. That'll actually maybe stick to the sides of the the barrel after you've had a couple of fouling shots and stuff. I'm not sure how that would work out. I suppose one of the days I gotta try that, but you know, for now we're gonna do our, do what we're doing here and, and continue this test. I'm not recommending this, but I, I don't pay much attention to the where the cutoff from the bullet mold here is on these things. In fact, that one there is probably going to go down the side. Not sure there where that one is. Um, you're doing this with a four uh, a four five four round ball. You probably won't have any put, uh, potential issues. But with the four five one, if that flat spot goes down the side, you're going to have a little opening there possibly on the side that a that a potential flash could happen. So. Good idea there is to make sure you've got a, uh, a felt wad in there or like I'm doing here I'm going to put lube on top of the ball and make sure that it's sealed around the around the crevice there so that I can't can't get a potential flash through that thing as long as I've got that one out of me as well turn that one up but the reason I'm mentioning this is because some think that maybe if you load the uh, cutoff spot on the top or on the bottom you'll get better accuracy and I really haven't seen that much difference in it I mean maybe some of the groups that I've shot that are really good Randomly happen to have that on the top, but I kind of don't think so. But anyway, that's the way I'm going to load this. I'm going to uh, push them down next. Here's kind of the way those things look when they get pushed down. They're down there a good half inch below the um, top of the cylinder here. To the top of the ball, they're about a half inch down. And I'm trying to get them uniform pressure. This isn't the best thing to do that. I think the loading lever actually on the gun might be able to give a, a better more consistent pressure on the on the compression of the powder and that's another thing I could should uh, think about doing a test sometime is run some of these down not quite as as far and see if I'm getting a lot of difference in the in the speeds there so next thing will be to put the lube on the top of the ball and run that outside here where there's a little better lighting kind of check around the edges make sure that lube is is doing this job there it looks like it is on this thing so I think I'm ready to uh, back in the gun and uh, cap it up well, that was close. I almost forgot to do the important thing here for this uh, test that we're running. Here's our uh, wire that we're going to shove into the um, nipple here to make some room for the flash. I mean, to get actually into the powder, maybe give us a better ignition. Chrono's working well today, but without a lot of light on that target, I'm having a harder time with my up and down, I think, but we'll see. So here's our first target and speeds average of 877 and a deviation of 15 and that's getting right down in there 
very close to our, our Go X, or actually in some cases equal to it. So um, I think that's really, really decent. And plan is to try this out at 50 yards. Well, with absolutely no wind right now, I've decided to go along, especially since we were down there in the 50 yard range. Well, I've set up a standard 25 yard target, but it's down there at the 50 yard range. Uh, it might help my eyesight a little bit, but um, there's really no point in showing what the speeds do because I can't really tell from the way I'm sighting it if I'm high or low anyway on a shot. So I've got a camera set up down range, so I should be able to get a little better picture of where these things are going. Hopefully this paper is big enough to, to cover the shot spread. Yeah, I'm getting a two and a half inch, two and a half inch group on those on those five. Uh, one that's down here, that's definitely, I feel, a uh, flyer. Really one of the first ones that I can point out to out of the last uh, 70 or so shots that I've fired this homemade black powder. Now, not necessarily blaming on the powder either because you'll have that same kind of issue with um, with uh, factory stuff. So. 50 yards, 2.2 cc's of the Duello powder, running around 17, 18 grains, 451 Lee and no wind, and, and six shots, and five shots in this group. So, um, going this larger target definitely helped. I couldn't do much with this. Well, here's the two targets that we shot this morning. We actually weighed the charges up here on this uh, 21 yard target. 18 grains uh, plus or minus uh, two tenths of a grain or so and we did something else with these we actually poked a hole up through the nipple into the powder with a, um, a small wire comes on the end of one of our uh, nipple wrenches and I think that helped our deviations quite a bit because we were running 30 35 maybe even 40 sometimes and this brought that down to around 15 and average speed around 877 so that's a 21 yard target Switched to a 50-yard um, uh, range, put up a 25-yard uh, time the rapid rapid fire pistol target, but we had it at 50 yards. And we did have one shot down here, which I did not call, so I'm thinking that would be actually a flyer. And we had five shots up here within about a two and a half inch group, and those are running about um, three three and a half inches above the point of aim. I say we shot that at 50 yards. 2.2 cc's of the do-it-yourself willow powder. 451 round ball, Lee, Lee uh, cast round ball, there was no wind, and that's for the six six shots. So, two targets, I'm pretty happy with, with the results here, and we're able to decrease our deviation some by poking the, the powder some, getting a spot maybe, maybe that helped the ignition some on it. I say with one or two targets, you can't be uh, sure of that, but I think I think it may help. So anyway, that's the results that we got for the shooting this morning.